Forms on a website are essential for collecting information from your visitors. In this video, we're going to talk all about forms in Squarespace, how to add them, how to customize them, how to use a post submit redirect, where they're saved, how to get the form to be a pop-up, and any common errors that might come up along the way. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca from Rebecca Grace Designs, and I help Squarespace designers push past the limitations of Squarespace using code. So here I'm working in a Squarespace 7.1 site using Fluid Engine. The first thing we're going to jump into is how you add a custom form. So you're going to go to the page that you want the form on. You're going to click edit. And then there's two ways you can add forms. You can either add a form section by clicking the add section button, scrolling down to forms and choosing one of the pre-designed layouts from Squarespace, such as this. Or if you're doing your own layout, you can click to add a block and then choose form and move it around in order to get it to where you want it to be. Once you have the form added, you're going to click on the pencil icon. You're going to choose a form name. Um, this is something if you're um, sending it or having an email to you, this is going to be the subject line. So make sure it makes sense for, for you and for what people are going to be adding in here. So for instance, if this is my contact form, I can say contact form in here or contact us or something like that. Then you're going to change the button text to whatever you would like and edit the form fields. In here you can add fields by clicking this button and choosing any of the different fields that Squarespace has here. Or if you want to change the order or delete out any of the form fields, you're going to click edit and then you can drag and drop them around or click on the minus sign to delete them. Once you're happy with what the form looks like here, you can also choose to add a post submit um, either message or redirect. So if you choose to have a post submit message after they click send, this box will be replaced with your message. You can add HTML in here as well. Um, but I usually like to say, you know, give them a direction of what's going to happen next. So something like, uh, thank you for your interest in Rebecca Grace Designs. Um, you know, I typically get back within such and such a time. So letting them know what's happening next. The alternative is to have it redirect to a page on your site, whether you're redirecting to a thank you page or um, a quote page or a product or something, depending on what your form is, you can have it redirect to somewhere else. Under design, you don't have too many options in here. You can choose to have a different button alignment, um, but the other option is if you want your form to have a pop-up. So if you want your form to just be a button, which then pops up on your site, this is where you're going to have it. You're going to set it to be a light box. And you'll see here that it's now just a button. The text I put here is what is going to be on this button here. And when they click on it, it will then pop up your form like this in a light box on your site. The last thing you need to set is the storage. Um, now I typically recommend having um, two places. I do, let's say email, I have it email it to me and I also connect it to my Google Drive just in case you know I've deleted that email, it gets lost somewhere, then I have another spot for it. You can also connect MailChimp here if you're using MailChimp or you can use Zapier to connect it to another email system. If you choose, you can also set up a Google reCAPTCHA just to help with any spam messages coming through your form. So once you have your form all set up how you like, there are more customizations you can do using code. So we're going to go to design, custom CSS, and we can write some code in here in order to customize things like the text and the colors. So for instance, I may want to change the size of the different titles that come in here. In order to do that, I'm going to use the following selector, form wrapper, field list, title, and that will select this title inside of forms. Notice I've also left myself a comment here so that I can remember what this code is for and keep my code nice and organized. Then in between the brackets, you can write a ton of different codes all targeting this particular title. 
So for example, I can change the font size. So I can do font size, one REM. It may be that you do have to add an important tag if Squarespace isn't letting you override their styles. I can also add a font family if you want it to have a custom font. I can make it italic by using font style. I can change the color. I'm just going to make it red for now so you can see the change and more. For now, let's just set the font size to 1.1. Now I can also target this text here. You'll notice that the code I've used so far did not change this text, and that's because that text is considered a form caption. So to do that, we're gonna use a slightly different selector Call it form wrapper, field list, caption, text. And again, the same applies. All of what I did before can also be applied to this. So maybe I want to do a font style here of italic. And finally, I can style the text that's inside of this box. That's the form input. And again, it's a slightly different selector. It's going to be form wrapper, field list, field, field element. And the exact same codes I've used inside of there, I can target here as well. I can change the font size to make it one REM. I can also set a background color. If I want the boxes to have a different color or be on brand. And finally, I can also use border radius in order to have the boxes round. It's a little hard with my red box there, but that will round the corner of these boxes. Let's say if my buttons are rounded, then I may also want these boxes to have a radius as well. And there you have it. So this is the selector for form titles. This is the selector for the captions. And this is the selector for the input boxes. And there's lots of different options you can use inside, including font size, family, style, the color of the text, the background color, and even adding a border radius. Another customization you might be interested in is having different elements beside each other in a form, just like the first and last name. Maybe you have an address and a phone number and you want them beside each other just like this. I have a blog post already on this and I'll link that below. There are a ton more options for customization, such as having custom radio buttons, changing the order of the date in the form, changing the size of checkboxes, and much more. And these are all available inside my coding resource, the Encyclopedia of Code. So what do I do if my form isn't working? If you have a red box around your form like this, that's a good sign that you haven't connected it properly to a source. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is come inside here, click on the pencil icon, go to storage, and make sure that you have it connected here. If necessary, you may want to disconnect it and then reconnect it again, because maybe something has gone wrong in the different settings and privacy when you went to connect it the first time. Again, I recommend having more than one. A lot of times I'll do email and Google Drive, let's say, just to make sure if one fails, I still have a backup option. You should now have your form all ready to go, but just in case, check out this video if you want to place two items next to each other inside a form.